Russia's been using the Shahid-136 drone, shown here, uh, to attack targets across the energy infrastructure across the whole of Ukraine. Um, that seems to pause on the 17th of November, but restarted again just the other day. Almost certainly that was a result of a resupply from Iran. We understand that a, a, an Iranian cargo uh, aircraft landed at Moscow just two days ago. Russia's been running very short of weapons, not only these drones, but also short-range ballistic um, missiles, range of about 500 kilometres with about a 500 kilogram warhead. Now, Iran's been very happy to provide support for, th for this, the question is, what does it want in return? Clearly, Iran does want an equitable partnership, but it also... Russia has offered Su-35 uh, multi-role fighter aircraft, it's offered helicopters and also um, surface-to-air missile systems and protection. Um, the, and what, most worrying, it's also offered help with its fledgling nuclear programme. All of this has very worrying implications for stability around the local region. Of course, we return to a focus of events on the ground, actually, in Ukraine itself. The Russian priority remains the Donbass region here, and particularly focus around uh, Bakhmut, which have been trying to encircle for many weeks, north, east and south, but they've not managed to take the west. Very difficult to get detailed information about what's happening here, because the Ukraine and Russian uh, version of events do differ. But it is described as a hellhole, and certainly um, President Zelensky described Bakhmut as being in ruins. From a Ukrainian perspective, they tend to be focused on just north of Stavatova, trying to cut off the logistic supply lines of Russia down to Bakhmut. And if we zoom out, Ukraine is also trying to do exactly the same thing down in Kherson. The Russian forces that are to the east of the Dnipro River here, cutting off the logistic supply lines, and literally only the other day, three ammunition dumps were uh, destroyed and also 20 military vehicles. Looking more strategically, though, winter may have arrived. It may have slowed the tempo of operations. Um, however, the, the conflict is no nearer uh, ending. It hasn't stopped Putin hinting that he was ready to um, negotiate when he's actually got no intention of doing that at all. It clearly is trying to put pressure on President Zelensky, make him appear to blame. In reality, this war is not just being fought on the battlefields, it's also being fought in the information domain. And it shows the real importance of making sure we take nothing at face value.